Antonio on sensor tube. Now, Chicho, can I open the floor with a question if we are ready for sure? How can I deal with a family member, brother that is struggling with mental illness and is becoming a burden to be around? Negative energy. Oh, Antonio. The the question that you're asking me, uh, I know exactly how you feel. As the saying goes, I feel you. Because as you might know, I, I know people on Gilded and on Twitch know, I've been dealing with family for the last heavy family for the last eight months, right? Heavy, heavy <laughs> for the last eight months. It's affected uh, my physical because stress affects you physically my mental uh, um, capacity to a certain degree because i still function quite well but there's a there's a touch of edginess to me there's a touch of anger to me impatience uh, because everybody if you're you're lucky if you don't but most people i know you got deadbeat May it be mentally ill or deadbeat family members or family members that make the wrong decisions all the time and they require you to bail them out, that they require your time, your energy, and they don't even appreciate how much, how much effort and how much love and care you're putting out while you're being spat upon, if you want to think about it that way, right? So it's a lot of negative energy coming your way brother Antonio I feel you I feel you um, the way I'm dealing with it is because it was a period where it was really affecting me and my partner noticed it she noticed it. it was for three months hardcore and then all of a sudden I just went I took a deep breath elder God I have family just like that yeah I think everybody does right and what I what happened because for three months I was <laughs> I can't like for three months I was sleeping about two hours a night right and that was restless sleep I was up 22 hours a day right either doing stuff dealing with family dealing with lots of bureaucracy lots of government stuff lots of uh, banking stuff lots lots of everything right as well as dealing with not just one family member multiple family members that are bouncing off each other they, I personally for me in my life I have I learned this a long time ago. I stay away from crazy. I don't give a rat's ass if they're family, friends, the random people. And I learned this from a really good friend of mine. I'm sorry if I'm going off, but I'm gonna go off. I learned this from a really good friend of mine, okay, that fought in the Iran Iraq war, right? In the nineteen eighties. He was older than me, right? We're drinking buddies. We drank. Like we built a bond, hardcore bond right uh, the first time I met the guy I met him through other friends we were in a bar right a ladies bar right and he was hanging out with these friends this two brothers that are like brothers to me and I went and met them and they said oh here's this guy and here's Chicho and I went hi how you doing I shook his hand the guy weighed maybe 110 pounds right <laughs> I've had other friends tell me he was one of the scariest people they've ever met. 110 pounds, right? This is a guy that fought in the Iran Iraq war, probably the most brutal war, one of the most, probably the most brutal war in the last, more brutal than Ukraine, Russia, right? Brutal war in the last 100 years, instigated by the powers that be, right? He showed effects. 110 pounds. I brought up my hand, shake his hand. I shook his hand, and he was a metal worker, right? And people that work with metal, um, they got <laughs> they got grip that if they get you, you're dead, right? <laughs> like if they get you in the throat, they just squeeze and you're dead, right? 110 pounds. So he shook my hand, and he kept on squeezing. I was like, I was looking at him in the eyes. He kept on squeezing hard, 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 hard. I held my ground, but I didn't squeeze back, right? Grip of death, Elder God says, it, grip of death. And he kept on squeezing, squeezing, where he, my fingers started going like this. 
I didn't make a sound. I looked at him in the eyes. And he kept on squeezing, squeezing. I turned to my friend. I go, why is he squeezing my hand so hard that it hurts? And they're like, right? And then he let go. He understood who I am at that point. So we, we became really good friends. He fucked me up for a few weeks. My hand was hurting, by the way. Right? That's, that's what it was, right? So, but then we became really good friends. We became drinking buddies. We hung out together for, I like to say, eight years, maybe. Right? Like a brother, right? And the way we broke it off, over the phone, turn, turned to him, I said, listen, I'm not going down the direction you're going. I'm going in this direction. Our friendship, we're still brothers. If you're in, you're in need, if you're stuck somewhere, give me a call. I'll be there. But we can't hang out no more. He goes, I understand. And that was that. And he never called me when he was in a jam. And I never called him when he was a jam. I saw him a couple more times. But just imagine someone I was hanging around with five to six days a week, right? going through some serious times four to six days a week right i'm telling you this story because i want you to understand where this advice that he gave me comes from he had seen the world right and i'm, I'm social man i'm fucking i talk to anybody i like chaos or used to like chaos and i interacted with a lot of people a lot of this a lot of this a lot of this right he turned to me Right, because he hung around me, he had my back, I had his back, and there was a group of us. We had each other's back, but I knew I could, I could go somewhere and pass out on the floor, right, in a biker bar. And we we used to drink in biker bars, some of them, right. I could go anywhere, and I could let loose because I knew he had my back, right. 110 pounds, no one would fuck with us, right. He turned to me, he goes one day, he goes Chicho. Listen, why do you like to talking to crazy people? I go, why? What do you mean? It's just funny. He goes, look, man, crazy people might be fun for a bit, right? Just interaction, quick interaction. But they're crazy. You don't know what they're going to do. Don't introduce, introduce that in your life. It'll fuck you up, right? He, he's, he basically said, stop engaging crazy people. Stop engaging crazy people. Okay, end the fucking story. I took his words to heart and I stopped engaging crazy people, family, friends, as well as random crazies that I came across. And I, for some reason, crazies like talking to me. That's one of the reasons I end up talking with crazy and I know crazy pretty well because I've interacted with a lot of crazy. But I stay away from crazy. I've been staying away from crazy for a long time. Right, hell God, I suddenly see Chicho and his friend doing the son of a bitch in front of her. <laughs> right? That's advice. Right? However, family is our burden. Right? So you have to put in as much as you can. Right? So for me, when I have to deal with the situation with family, I've had to deal with it for a long time, but I've always been arm's length. But the need was required for me to step into the game right and really take care of shit right really clean house take care of shit right for the first three months i was going insane two two hours a night of sleep and restless sleep and stuff like this and then after three months of me fucking putting in chicho 100 fucking 50 percent right when i put fucking time in i'm putting in time right that's why whenever i work with any company if they wanted to get a job done they got me to do it because <laughs> if i took on a project i did it right so after three months my partners whew, going wow this is insane right and then after three months i just went whew, right and the reason i was able to do that it don't don't get me wrong it's still stressful i go through stressful periods and stuff like this but it wasn't 24 hours crazy right i went whew, and my partner goes something happened and I would talk to her, and she said some stuff. I took it to her and stuff. I said, yeah, because one thing you told me was, Chicho, you're doing the best you can, the most you can. You're doing more than anybody would, right? And after three months, I got it to a place where 
I accepted that I had put in everything that I could plus a lot more and I couldn't put in anything more. And if these crazy people were doing things to, for, to the detriment of their well-being, right, or other family members' well-being, then the chips would fall wherever they fell because I've done the best that I can, the most that I can. So you have to be satisfied to where you are in regards to your family dealing with crazy, the burden you, you carry, right? If you can't carry that burden anymore, you got to lighten the load, right? If you're walking, you could use any analogy, walking through a storm and you're carrying all this burden. If you can't carry that burden anymore, you got to jettison some of the burden, right? You've seen this in movies. Helicopter's too heavy, can't fly. Get rid of the seats. Get rid of the idiot. Whoop, off they go, right? Don't do that, you know. But if you have to save 10 out of 15 people, you jettison the five, right? So if you're dealing with crazy and there is crazy family, friends, whatever it might be, if you feel to for yourself that you've done everything you can and more and it's not being appreciated and certain people that if if they took your advice or whatever it was their lives would improve a lot including that would remove stress from the family if you've done all you can up to that point then you're allowed to take a breather and go i did all i could let the shit at the fan possibly now again take with grain of salt you could let it play out and if you need to you can step in again right but if it's going to play out in a way where it's the damage that is being caused is not as severe as before you got involved where you were able to put the pieces into place where you know the ship wasn't going to go down it's just a few areas that are going to be flooded right then you did the best you could right really uh, it's your life as well okay it's your sanity it's your health as well so and there are people that love you so if you're sacrificing yourself for others then know that you're hurting other people right uh, and you whoever it is the crazy person in your life has no right to uh, to destroy other people's lives because they're crazy right Crazy has multiple multiple reasons why people go crazy. Sometimes it's chemical imbalance. A lot of the times that I've seen is because of dumbass choices that they've made that have brought them to that point in their lives where they don't know how to deal with it and they continue to make the same fucking mistake again and again and again and again and again. And they try to drag you into it. Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. Right? Antonio, not knowing... Uh, your exact situation uh just coming at it from my perspective what i've come out in the last four not four months eight months right um that's what comes to mind for me right? that's what comes to mind for me antonio to give you more context i'm living with a brother that needs professional intervention but doesn't want to be helped and has be become a major burden to our parents and is negative to be around 24 7. Um, maybe it's time man this is family i can't eldegoss says dump dump all my crazy during covid yeah uh, i dumped a lot before that eldegoss but antonio your brother is your burden but maybe the best thing you can do is get your life together right so when the shit really hits the fan for them you have enough funds resources and energy to help them out they're they're if they're drowning like number one rule of saving someone that's drowning if they're doing this and lashing out and stuff like this you can't save them you can't save them they'll take you down with them right you could do a couple of things to save them you could go up to them and fucking knock them out right when they're knocked out bring them to safety right or you could let them drown and hopefully be able to bring them up take them to shore and resuscitate them right that's the only two options i see sometimes fucking knocking them silly just not gonna work 
right? Not going to work. Sometimes the best choice would be for you to swim to the docks, hop in a boat. Mm. Hopefully they'll still lie by the time you get there and you can throw them a rope, right? But you can't go down with them. If you go down with them, that's a burden on you, on your family, and the bitterness in you will annihilate your life. Really, it's just it's just what it is, right? Cheryl, there's a huge difference between love, demonstrating love, and enabling. They don't need to be tied. Too many think they are. Yeah. Cheryl, it, 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 do you understand what Cheryl's saying, Antonio? You love them. You'll do anything for them. But you can't enable their craziness, right? It's like enabling alcoholics, enabling gambleholics, enabling drug addicts, enabling liars right don't buy their bullshit right call them out right lobo yes family is family but don't let them drag you down as a certain point you have to be selfish ditch the dead wait and live your life 